Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Physiology Learning. Today we are going to see a very interesting topic that is the cerebral cortex and the various lobes of the brain. So coming to the discussion, we are discussing the CNS lectures wherein today we are going to start with the most important function that is the higher functions. Today we are starting with the higher functions and in that we will be discussing about the cerebral cortex and the lobes of the brain. So coming to the learning objectives for today. So what all things we are going to learn today? We are going to learn about the various layers of cerebral cortex, specific cortical areas and their functions and association areas. What is this association area? This is one of the most important association between all the various different areas of the brain. Then divisions of association area and the functions of all the divisions of association area. So this is going to be our learning objective today. So let us get into the topic. So first starting with the layers of the cerebral cortex. Cerebral cortex is one of the most complex regions in the brain and it has billions of neurons. They say about it has 80 billion neurons. They say about the cerebral cortex has about 80 billion neurons and it has several layers in it. Basically they have six different layers out of which the first layer and the last layer starts with the M. So first layer is molecular layer and the last layer is multiform layer. Then coming to the other layers. The second layer is external granule cell layer, third layer is external pyramidal cell layer. This has pyramidal cells that is why it is called pyramidal cell layer. Then we have internal of both of it, the internal granule cell layer and internal pyramidal cell layer. So most of the impulses, all our sensory impulses passes through the thalamus and finally they reach the cortex. This ends up in the layer that is the layer 4. There are some non-specific stimulus from the thalamus which reach all the layers. They go to all other layers like the 1, 2, 3, 4, the first 4 layers. And coming to the cells in the cerebral cortex, we have various different cells. Two of them are excitatory, namely the pyramidal cell and the spiny stellate cells. Both of them are excitatory and they release the neurotransmitter that is glutamate. And coming to the other two cells which are inhibitory, they are the basket cells and channelier cells. They release a neurotransmitter that is GABA. Out of this, the most important cell is the pyramidal cell because it is the one which gives the descending fibers and it is the one which is giving excitatory stimulus to other parts of the brain. And coming to the inhibitory cell, inhibitory cells, the channelier cells is the one which majorly inhibits the pyramidal cells. So it has most powerful action to inhibit the pyramidal cells. So these are the various different cells in the cerebral cortex. Now coming to the specific cortical area, what do you understand by the term specific? It means that that area is destined for a very specific function or a particular function. So coming to these areas, we have already discussed in our various lectures wherein we saw the primary motor cortex and very next to it we have the supplementary and premotor cortex. What is their function? Their function is to plan the motor areas and they have the motor homunculus also. Then coming to the sensory area, we have the primary somatic that is the somatosensory area and the secondary somatic areas. They also have the sensory homunculus and they also are involved in sensing it or understanding the sensation that is carried by the ascending tracts. Other than this, we have some other specific areas. What are these areas? This we will discuss in the special senses wherein the visual, the visual impulses primary go to the occipital area. In the occipital area, we have the primary visual and secondary visual areas. Other than this, we have two more areas which is important for the hearing. That is the auditory area, the primary auditory area and secondary auditory area. So these areas are destined and they have a very, very specific function. Whereas other than this, there are several other areas that is like a gray zone in the brain. No, not exact specific function is there, but they coordinate and associated with various regions of the brain. Those areas are called as association areas. So primarily our discussion will be on this association areas and functions of all the association areas. So coming to the another diagram, as you can see here, the yellow shaded regions, the yellow shaded regions are just the primary sensory areas and the motor areas. They are very, very little. Their portion in the brain, as you can see here, the entire thing is blue. The blue areas are the association cortices. This much amount of brain is subjected to the association areas. So what does it mean? It means that the association areas has a very, very important role in the brain and their functions are very, very important. Now coming to the, what is the function of association area? If you ask me in one sentence, I will say it is functioning in cognition. 
So, it functions in cognition. So, the most important function of an association area is cognition. So, before understanding what is cognition, I will show you an example. From that, you can understand yourself what is cognition. So, try to observe this picture. What do you see? Most of us who is seeing this picture for the first time, they will be just seeing the patterns of white and blacks. It will be like a checkerboard and the patterns of whites and blacks will be there. It does not make any meaning to us. Now, let us try to understand what happens if we have a prior knowledge about this, uh, this painting or this image. So, try to observe this carefully. Here in this image, all of us could see a person like his hair is there and the facial features are there and his arms and everything is visible. Now, we have a prior information about this image. Now, let us try to get back to this previous image. If you want, take your time and pause the video and see this image for a little more while. Then, once you suddenly switch over to the previous board, previous image, wherein we were just seeing the blacks and whites, now most of us will be able to appreciate a person, which we saw in the other image. So, what is happening here? Initially, whenever any stimulus is presented, always our brain tries to relate it to our previous memories, previous incidences and everything and make the meaning out of it. Always the brain constantly wants to understand the external environment. This function is called cognition. So, now let us try to understand the definition of cognition. Here it says that it processes all the sensory input and it is transformed, reduced, elaborated. Not only that, it is stored and recovered and reused also. For example, when the second image was shown, it was able to store that memory, it was able to recover that memory and it was able to apply this checkerboard pattern and understand the image out of it. So, basically cognition means it is the understanding of the external environment or the world surrounding us. So, otherwise they say that the diverse function of the association cortices is generally referred as cognition. So, what is the diverse function of all the association cortices? It is to understand the world around us. So, this is what cognition is all about. So, all the association cortices are involved in cognition function. Some might have different type of cognition function and some might have a different different type of cognition. So, coming again to the various divisions of association areas. Here we have four major divisions, the frontal, parietal, temporal and limbic association cortices. Here we do not have the occipital. Some of the books write it is parieto temporo occipital association cortices. But some of the books write these four major classification. Since occipital is taken majorly by the which cortex? It is taken by the primary and secondary visual cortex like we saw it in the specific area. That is why we do not have the occipital here. So, coming to the frontal association cortices. So, what is the function of frontal association cortices? This frontal association cortices, what it does is, it receives information from the motor area, it receives information from the sensory areas. So, both it will receive. Not only that, it receives information from the other association areas. So, now it has impulses of the motor system, sensory system and other association areas. So, what it will do is, it will form a behavioral pattern like if the person is, it determines the behavior of the person. So, it will use all these functions and it determines the behavior of the function. Not only that, it also has one more function, it is involved in working memory. So, suppose if you are remembering your OTP and suddenly you type it in the mobile. So, that part of the memory is called working memory where it is constantly being repeated till you enter that value into the mobile. So, these are the main functions of a a frontal association cortices. So, what is the most important function? It is the behavior of the person. Especially this behavior of the person, he, all of us behave depending upon the social context. For example, in our home, we will be relaxed and we can wear whatever we want. But whenever you go for a function or you go for an uh, attending some uh, important meetings, we dress up nicely. So, according to the social context, our behavior will change. If there is a lesion to the frontal lobe, what will happen? This entire behavior will be lost and the person is going to behave inappropriately. So, this helps in selection, planning and execution of appropriate behavior, particularly in the social context. Next thing is, there is one more area in the frontal association cortices itself, that is the Broca's area. This Broca's area, we will be discussing in the language and speech part of the lectures. So, coming to the case of Phineas Cage, how did they understand that? this particular frontal cortex is very, very important for a behavior. So, what has happened is, this is an historical case, wherein this Phineas Cage is a very good intelligent uh, engineer who was developing the railroads. So, what has happened is, whenever they have blasted it for it, there was an iron rod which pierced through his frontal lobe. 
it is very devastating for his life and what happened is this person was staying conscious till he was got to the hospital and what, finally what they had to do they had to remove the entire frontal lobe so after removing the frontal lobe what has happened is the entire behavior of Phineas H has become inappropriate the people who knew him were saying that the, he is not the person who he was before because his entire behavior is changed now and he was not able to plan or do some complicated things also. Now let's talk about the next association area that is the parietal association area. This parietal association area receives information from two places. One from the visual cortices, visual influence from the occipital cortex, then somatosensory information. What is somatosensory information? The position of or the sensation of the body will be carried to the somatosensory cortex. It will be carried to the parietal lobe only. So it will receive both this impulses. So visually also it is receiving and somatosensory also it is receiving. So what it will do is it will create the spatial awareness for us. For example, I can say that what is exactly on the right side of my body and what is exactly I can visual impulses are coming from the left side of the space. So this kind of spatial awarenesses are created by this parietal association cortices. So it determines the motor behavior as well as the spatial awareness. If I am not aware of the space, what is going to happen? I am going to completely ignore the impulses coming from that region. Even though if I see it, but my brain will not pay attention to it. So that's what, that's what will happen for a parietal association cortices injury. Let's see a very beautiful example. This is a case of a German artist. What has happened to him is he had a stroke. He had a stroke in his right posterior parietal cortex and it was damaged. So this artist can make very good self portraits. So what has happened after the injury, whenever he was trying to make his own self portrait during at immediately till the second month of injury, he was drawing very, very little, but on only one half of the body. Later on, as and when he recovered through the injury, what has happened at nine months, he was able to perceive both the impulses. But what has happened initially, he was completely ignoring one half of his face itself. So this kind of neglect will be there. So the modern scientists named it very beautifully. It is called as contralateral neglect syndrome. For example, if there is a parietal injury on the right side, the person will completely ignore the stimuluses from the left side. So it will go to extreme extents. I will tell you a few examples. You will understand what is its importance. For example, the whenever a person was asked to draw a house, this patient, he was completely ignoring one half of the house. So ideally, if a normal person was asked to bisect this big line, which I have highlighted with pink, what we will do, we will try to bisect it somewhere here. But for this person, he is completely ignoring already one half. So what will happen? According to him, only this half is present. So he will be bisecting at that end. It can go to very severe extremes because now the somatosensory information has also been carried and it is received by the parietal association cortices. Now this person has a lesion on the right side. So this left half of his own body will also be ignored by the person. They will come and complain to the doctor like somebody has put a uh, one uh, hand and one leg whenever he is sleeping in his bed. He is thinking it is some, uh, somebody else's because he is completely ignorant to the presence of those organs which is a part of him. And whenever he is eating food also, he will be eating only one half of the plate. So these kinds of behavior can be seen in the case of parietal association cortices damage. So now let's go to the next association cortices that is a temporal association cortices. What does it do? It is most closely related with the frontal lobe. It is most closely related with the frontal lobe which is concerned with the emotions. And it also receives multiple sensory inputs. And it is very very important for recognition of sensory stimuli. So what happens is if the person is having a temporal lobe damage, he will not be able to recognize the sensory stimuli and our Wernicke's area is also a part of temporal association cortices. So what will happen whenever a person is having a temporal association cortex injury? There is a case called as case of LH. What this person had is he had a temporal association cortices injury and he was not able to recognize his, even his close friends and relatives from their faces. This kind of behavior is called as prospognosia. So the basic, the basically the person is developing agnosia. What is agnosia is not knowing. Bas he can acknowledge that, that there is a person, but he will not be able to identify who it is. That is called as prospognosia from the facial cues. But if you ask the next person to talk or their body shape and gait, he can identify them. 
he cannot identify them specifically with their spaces. And coming to the last association cortices, that is a limbic association cortices. Our next lecture will be on a limbic system, wherein we will understand that limbic system is very, very important for the emotional. All the memories that is related to emotional emotions are associated in the limbic cortex. And they are also involved in episodic memory. Episodic memory is also involved. And it is like the gateway to the hippocampal memory system. I hope it's clear. Thank you for listening. I would like to pay credits to the both Guyton as well as Candle's principles of neuroscience because all the images that we have seen, the beautiful images are taken from these books only. Thank you for listening. We will see in the next video of Limbic System. Thank you so much.